Hi guys, I'm Frederick from Opeth. And if you're not in the now, you're in the nothing. So you guys are out on the road again. Um, how's, how's the tour been going so far? Pretty good. Or very good, I think. Mm -hmm. Been getting some, some pretty good responses from the fans. I think so. It was different in the, in the beginning when they didn't know Heritage, our new record. Mm -hmm. But as soon as the tour starts to progress ahead, you notice that people get more and more into the new album, mm -hmm. which is cool. Mm -hmm. Now, do you see uh, the the crowd getting into any any particular song more than any other um, from from city to city? Is there one that's more receptive? I guess the dig uh, uh, the Devil's Orchard, nice. but do, we do start the show with that song. But uh, oh, nice! It seems to work really good. Mm -hmm. yeah, and also, Slither comes across really. Good, which yeah. is a tribute to Ronnie Dio, mm -hmm. rainbowish, early rainbowish era kind of song. Mm -hmm. uh, because when we play that song, before that we've done the acoustic kind of part of the show, and then we kick in Slither, which is more up tempo and that works good. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, coming out on, on this tour um, in, with the new record is, is being a, a little different from your previous stuff. Um, was it difficult to decide on what you wanted to play live on, on this tour? Yeah, in a way, it was Mike's idea that we should do, try to pick songs from the older catalog, which kind of connected with the stuff on Heritage. Mm -hmm. So this tour is slightly different. It's not, we don't do many of the super death metal stuff on this one, you know. Mm -hmm. But uh, I was, in the beginning, is this gonna work, you know, but it seems to work, you know. Mm -hmm. And Opeth has done similar tour before on Damnation, so it's a bit different run, but it's still got a lot of heavy stuff in it as well. Mm -hmm. um, is it more difficult playing this set with uh, the Heritage CD than in previous uh, albums? It in a like way, because we used to do the acoustic set and all that, changing guitars and all that. It's Seems a little more technical. It is, too. but now as we've done 13 shows, oh, okay. it's getting there. It's yeah, yeah. It's like you get into the routine, yeah. everything just keeps flowing. That's, I've noticed a lot on the, on the difference between the heritage and, of course, watershed, and, and um, the, the feeling that I get when I listen to it, it has a very unique feeling, and it still has that open feel to it. Yeah, cool. I think so too. It's still very dark, you know. Yeah. Yeah, kind of evil song. It's not like we went commercial or anything on this album. I think it's no. We wanted to do something that sounded earthy and not edited and no sound replacements on drums and stuff like that. Yeah, that's pretty common these days. It's got a good sound to it, and uh, you guys recorded that uh, with some Pro Tools in the very beginning. I think you guys did. And then yeah, we took did. That to the the studio and uh, it came out very well. I like the sound, the unique sound that it's creating. Really cool. Yeah. We kind of carbon copy the demo of the album when we enter the studio. Yeah. So Axe and Mendes play the drums and bass live, and then they can listen to the vocal lines and the guitar lines. Oh, okay. So that's kind of good because then they wouldn't probably wouldn't do stuff that would interfere with the vocal line or anything like that. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's cool. That's really cool. Um, Touring here in the U.S. Is, is a little different than touring maybe in, in the, you know, Europe or in Sweden. Is, is the metal scene a little different here than what, what it'd be like over across seas? I think it's probably bigger here. Bigger it's here? It's big overseas too. But, yeah. And it's different, you know. Tour buses are different, but uh, I do enjoy it here. It's fun. You know? Yeah. It's such, such a huge continent. So much stuff to see here, but yeah, we rarely get time to see anything though. But but hopefully, get to see the Grand Canyon someday or something. Yeah, yeah, that'd be <laughs> nice. That'd be really nice. Um, with your guitar skills, which I got to tell you are phenomenal. Um, I mean, um, I've seen a little bit of uh, the uh, the interview on uh, Watershed, the making of Watershed, and mm -hmm. stuff like that, and uh, and uh, you and Michael just seem compatible when you guys first got together was was that just right off the bat could you guys just because you got to have a little compatibility to be able to play together 
Um, was that easy for you to, and him to just sit down and just start start writing? And yeah, actually, it, it was. Yeah. Before I joined the band, we had a bit of a jam session at Mike's house, and he was showing me some open thrifts, and he wanted me to show him some technique stuff. Yeah. And I think he, in a way, was kind of secretly auditioning me then. Oh, really? See if I could play those, those riffs. Oh, that's awesome. That's, that's cool. But for me, I mean, I had to, you know, dig deep into Michael's style of guitar playing when I joined the band. Yeah. And I feel now, after four and a half years, it's... We make a good uh, guitar team. Our yeah. styles are a bit different. But I also oh, had yeah. to learn his style within the riffs and the acoustic yeah. kind of style that he's really good at. He's, he's got a very unique style of playing, even from back with Orchid and, and uh, yeah. Morning Rise, and it's, it's been carried that whole time. And, and I, I think it's awesome to be able to hear an album and almost know that it's open, you know, hear a song or something, you know. It's really cool. And, and, uh, that, um, that Lord Alfred Hall that you guys played at a few yeah. years back, how was that? Was that is that pretty exciting? Or? It was pretty exciting, yeah. yeah. Until the camera dude stepped out the power cord to my guitar rig. <laughs> is that what happened? Yeah, that's what happened. Oh, wow. Because uh, I, I noticed that, that I think it was the Lotus Eater, I think it was. It, it was, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. This very left out kind of part, which is just me playing this picked chord shape, you know. Yeah. It was fun. <laughs> but it was an amazing experience playing there. Oh, I mean, yeah. Yeah. and stop looking up in the ceiling because it's so huge. You know? Wow. It's difficult to get a good sound there also because it was built for, you know, opera and stuff where they didn't the mic up anything. You know? Oh, yeah. But it was pretty massive. That's cool. And you guys were actually one of the first metal bands to play. In, I don't in think any band who had growl vocals ever played there before. Wow. So wow. First thing Axe did, I remember, was played blast beat when he <laughs> got his drum set up. That, that's that's amazing. That's yeah, awesome. That's funny. It's like groundbreaking, you know, for for that type of establishment, you know. Yeah. That's that's awesome. How did that whole thing come about? Well, it, because of the anniversary shows, we could, I guess, since we did less shows, we could people would travel longer, so we could we could pull off and play a big show and. Also, we wanted to do the DVD there, and um, pretty cool place to do a DVD, I would say. Oh yeah, yeah, definitely. Like frame uh, the Evolution X tour mm -hmm. with that DVD in Royal Laboratory. Mm -hmm. So it was cool. And it was sold out, so it was quite amazing. Yeah, definitely. Now, um, what what can the the fans hear? For instance, tonight, expect from from your guys' live performance. What what do you have in store for us tonight? Well, it's a selection. It's focused on heritage stuff. Play about five songs live. Nice. And uh, some uh, a lot of stuff Opeth never played live before. Really? Like uh, Throw the Winter, which was written for that TV game God of War, mm. and mm. Patterns in the Ivy too. Mm. Stuff like that. Mm. Porcelain Hard from. Uh, Watershed. Mm -hmm. so. Now, what about the like opening acts? Did, did you have a, a say in who you guys bring out on the road with you, or was that kind of just the booking agent's idea? We usually get suggestions with our management and booking agencies. Mm -hmm. But uh, Catatonia is good friends of ours, so it wasn't. Yeah, I mean, it's a perfect happy pairing. Perfect pairing of the two bands. Yeah, so. Jonas and Michael are like best buddies, you know. So mm -hmm. It's really good. Nice. Very cool band. Pull off a good show. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, I bet. Um, when you first started playing, was there any certain band or a key band that might have influenced you to to take your guitar playing a certain direction? Did you have some favorite bands back when you know when you yeah, first started? Yeah, we start out with Kiss, ACDC, yeah. Iron Maiden, Judas Priest, yeah. Dio, Aussie. All that it was kind of tie in and influence you and take parts of that. Yeah, well, it was mainly Ace Freely who got me to pick up the guitar. Oh, yeah. But when I started to practice a lot, it was Michael Schenker who inspired me because he oh. had such a great tone. And I saw this uh, thing with MSG live on TV. Oh, yeah. That really like, wow, can you do that with a guitar? 
Wow. That really inspired me to play a lot more. Wow, yeah. Like, once again, it's phenomenal. I mean, I watch you play and I'm just like, wow. I mean, <laughs> it's pretty, pretty amazing. Mm. Was that something that came natural to you playing guitar? Did you take lessons? Did you teach yourself? I took a few lessons, yeah. I started out quite early age and I was pretty determined at an early age that I wanted to be a, a guitar player. Mm -hmm. uh, I think I started playing at 10, 11 maybe. Wow. But at the age of 13 that was when I started practice. Like seven hours a day or something. Mm -hmm. Wow. So that's what it takes. <laughs> and I went to high school. I, I quit school when I was 15, or I, and started work at the factory to buy my first Marshall amp. You know. So I was just, right. nice, nice. <laughs> wow. So I was lucky. <laughs> <laughs> um, on this tour here, uh, you guys doing a lot of dates, or you guys got a long tour stretched out for the U.S. I think it's close to 40 shows we do. 40 shows? Yeah. Wow. Do six shows in a row, then an off day or travel day. Uh -huh. yeah. So it's a pretty tight schedule. And wow. Then we go back home for three, four days, and then we do a European tour for 35 shows, like wow. something like that. And then we go to Australia. So we're going to be back home like 22nd of December. Wow. Yeah. Do you ever get homesick or? Want it, you know? Yeah, of course. Bit, I mean, you yeah. miss family and stuff. Yeah. But it, the excitement of the tour probably keeps you going a little bit. It does. Yeah. Every, it's always fun to stand on stage and play. Yes. Yes. It's awesome. Now, uh, something I've, I've started asking bands recently is because we've had all these social network sites pop up, Facebook and Twitter and stuff like that. Um, how has that affected Opeth? Has, has that been a good thing for you guys? And do you guys uh, interact with with those? I don't even have Facebook, but uh, I do read the open Facebook, and I think it's good. Mm -hmm. you know, I don't mind, but I'm, I'm kind of lazy with computers, unless I'm recording something. Mm -hmm. Just mainly sit around and play guitar instead. <laughs> it's kind of like Danny. Same here. way, unless yeah. we're recording, I have no idea about him. <laughs> <laughs> nice. What were uh, some of the previous bands? Because my buddy and I were trying to figure out, you know, if you were in this band or you were in this band, and uh, were you in uh, previous bands before uh, Opeth? Um, yeah, right before Opeth, I played with Arch Enemy. That's what I. That's what we thought. And I also played with a doom metal band called Crux, okay. which is with guys from Candlemass and old guys from Entombed. Oh, nice. Which is kind of psychedelic doom metal. Entombed has always been one of the, one of the favorites. It's always been one of the favorites of mine as well. But that's that's awesome. That's really cool. Cool. Um, anything else you want to toss in? Um, just that I admire your work. Um, I think you guys are you've greatly influenced me, you know, and, and my music as well. And I think that you guys are actually, I mean, to touch somebody across the whole world like that is, is I think, really, really cool. Really cool. And it's definitely a lifetime goal that, that can be achieved, you know. But I just want to tell you thank you, you know, for playing and doing doing what you do because because it's it's doing something out there i like it so it's cool really cool thank you yeah. any uh, last comment you want to toss out to some of our readers well hope you enjoy the new album and see you on tour cool perfect awesome